This snake was born without a father. This is Frida, our girl Ariana's baby. Frida was born through a process called parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is actually a cloning or a duplication. She replicated her own cells and created an animal without a male. It's pretty crazy. Believe it or not, this is one of the first times they actually interacted with each other since they were born. What are you thinking, girl? This is literally you. So today we're gonna talk all about the anomaly that is parthenogenesis. But first, Mike! Oh, Mike. Grab a two-headed snake, a two-headed turtle, and the snake without eyes. Oh, man. Thank you. And believe it or not, this is not the first time that Ariana here has had a parthenogenesis birth. We just expected Aries to have a bunch of infertile ova because, again, it was just two females, and Aries has never been in with another anaconda other than Ivy that's a female. And then we noticed a baby sticking out of Aries. We were completely blown away, and sure enough, Aries had a live baby. This was something that we never thought was going to happen. I didn't think Aries was a female, obviously, so I didn't expect even infertile over, but to have a live baby, a virgin live baby, was absolutely incredible. It's called parthenogenesis. Absolutely a rare occurrence with an animal like this. What an amazing thing. And to actually see her give birth to that animal was something that I just never thought I would see. Wow, we have a baby green anaconda end up being born right in front of us. But unfortunately, like most times with parthenogenesis, those babies did not make it. So just like every morning, checked on the little baby green anaconda, and literally yesterday it was completely fine, handling it, tongue response amazing, everything completely, completely fine. Of course it hasn't shed because it wouldn't be shedding for seven to 10 days after it actually is born, and it wouldn't eat until after the shed, so obviously it wasn't eating, but came in and literally it looked fine, you know, like it looks completely good, but I mean, I am, guys, I'm gutted right now. I mean, gutted. Uh, it passed away. It passed away, and and now you know parthenogenesis is is always tough, you know, and and there can be other things because again, it's not a normal snake. It's a virgin birth, right? It doesn't have any chromosomes from the male, and and oftentimes they are born stillborn or king. But this one was perfect. I mean, 100% perfect. My first baby green anaconda ever produced, and and not just normal green anaconda, but a virgin birth parthenogenesis. I mean, I was absolutely infatuated with this animal, and I was so looking forward to the story, you know, when she was a year old, two years old, three years old, to be able to tell kids about the fact that she was a bir virgin birth, and just that story was going to be so amazing and touch so many people's hearts, and, and you know, Obviously, I don't know what to say, man. She passed away. But nature doesn't waste any. She ate her placenta raw. She didn't even cook. Pretty amazing. Mother nature never wastes anything. You can see Ariana is actually going up and actually eating the placenta, that goopy stuff. And that basically is giving her nutrition. And we see that with live bears all the time. Even the infertile ova she'll typically eat to try to put nutrition back in. Again, mother nature isn't wasting anything. And it's really, truly amazing to see. Not only did she not cook her placenta, but she actually ate her unfertile ova, which is basically the eggs that are inside her that didn't turn into a snake. Aries happens to be eating something kind of interesting. Now, of course, you remember that I didn't understand why Aries and Ivy didn't breed this year because they both look like they're about the same thing. Well, guess what we found? We found Aries actually having infertile ova. That's right, these are infertilized babies basically. So Aries is not a boy, it is actually a girl. And this is the interesting part, Aries is actually eating the actual ova. It's really truly amazing how mother nature works, right? So basically what happens is oftentimes when a female has infertile ova, rather than just wasting that infertile ova, they will actually ingest them and eat them just like Aries is doing right now. That just gives them all that energy that they expelled by being grabbed for up to three to five months right so it's really cool and then Aries literally took one right out of my hand it was absolutely an amazing experience what a cool thing to witness so it's pretty crazy to see that nature doesn't waste anything there's a big kind of trend people eating their own placenta after birth they literally do that in nature so there's got to have some merit to that nature doesn't do stuff on accident so if reptiles are doing it maybe we should do that too you are so funny
Where are you trying to go? And since Ariana here has had multiple parthenogenic births, how rare is it? And what are the odds the snake survived? So it's actually a common occurrence to have a parthenogenic birth from a snake like Ariana here. We have had three here in the Reptarium with only one survivor snake. That's a 33% chance. Odds are if there were more births, it would be a lot lower than that. Rita here is about four months old. Let's go check in with Maria and see how well is she actually doing. No, 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 no. Uh, I two headed turtles that you asked for. So we're talking about polycephaly. Tell me something about turtles that you have. This is Chopsticks. This is Leonardo or Donatello. They're conjoined twins. Conjoined twins. Yeah, so it's either two turtles in one egg that didn't separate fully or they didn't conform fully. Oh. You know how like sometimes you hear twin of people say like I ate my twin? That's the conforming of the twin to create one person. Obviously they started to do that or they didn't separate and then he's peeing all over my hand. And then it just bam, two turtles, one shell or one shell with two heads. Now what's the survival rate of like a turtle? Okay, so a female red ear slider can lay about 200 eggs a year. But at the same time, these guys are about one of 35 mature two-headed red ear sliders. What that means is they might be produced very, very often, but the survival rate is only like maybe 10% of the time. Wow. It's not that large. That does make me think though, where's that two-headed snake I asked for, Mike? Fiddle six. Pretty good, aside from eating. What's happening with her eating? Not really eating on her own right yet. Trying all different food options, you know, learning from Ivy's babies. We've, okay. we've tried everything. Quail to chicken blood to fish to fish oils. Even frog legs and some, like, live fish. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. Just about every single one to eat, all 40. We are still assist feeding, though, so okay. we are giving her her meals. I've been doing smaller meals two times a week. Keep her body weight up. Right. I think it's about four to five months old now. Mm -hmm. So she's still doing good, at least. And then we remember, we have Verde up here. Oh, yeah. God. God, she went so long without really getting a regular meal plan, per se. Keep it up. Do you have uh, any ideas in mind to potentially get her to eat on her so, own? So, as long as I keep persisting with her, I'm yeah. sure I have faith, you know, we can see her eating in the future. All right, one last question. I noticed that Frida here was a female. Now, is that a coincidence? It's not by coincidence. It is a carbon copy of mom, so it oh, has to be female. That's crazy. But it's not only snakes that have parthenogenesis. So, this is a morning gecko here. They reproduce using parthenogenesis. They they're called morning geckos actually because I used to think that they were all female. So morning gecko, like, like morning a spouse or something like that. They were mourning the loss of all the males. <laughs> it's not actually true. It's pretty rare to find a male, but you can find some males within their species, though they're usually sterile. These guys pretty much exclusively <laughs> use parthenogenesis to reproduce. They're actually super widespread also, like as far as where they live. There's populations of them in Hawaii, Mexico, Southeast Asia, like they're all over the place. Very cool little guys. You look in here and just see like all kinds of little eyes. I just saw a little baby hop off. Mike doesn't like spiders. I wonder if he's scared of stuffed animal spiders too. Oh, no, 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 no. There it is. Two headed snake. Ben and Jerry. Perfect. We've talked a little bit about the two headed turtle and their survival rate. Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a snake and a turtle? Okay, so turtles are a little bit more hardy. They have more of a shell, a gut. you would say. Oh, gut? Good. They eat a lot more basically. There are quite a few two-headed snakes that are produced as well, but since king snakes and like corn snakes, the ones that really get two heads, but they're born so small. And a lot of the times they don't have a very good survival rate anyway. These guys are also hatched out more frequently. But Ben and Jerry is only like one of three two-headed king snakes in the entire world. There probably is like six or seven two-headed hmm. snakes that are mature in the entire world. So that's not a lot. Not a lot at all. And we have one of them right here. And he's so cool. And he's gotta be what, like eight years old now? So when the it comes to dominance and control. Control. Do you think they're working off of both their brains or do you think one guy's kind of living his life and the other's just along for the ride? So I definitely think that both heads are thinking because we we know and we've seen both heads eat. That's true. So we like to give them the smaller meals so both heads have the enrichment and the choice to eat. But when it comes to the controlling of the snake, this is Ben right here. It's yeah. the more straight on head. He does most of the driving slash eating. Now what's interesting that we've noticed though is while Ben is eating, if Jerry's not eating, he actually starts to move the snake. Oh, so it's like Ben's distracted and Jerry's like, it's my time to Yeah, shine. it's like a little Tesla. It drives itself. Huh. What about that no-eyed snake I asked for? Shoot. 
why does parthenogenesis happen? Now, this is gonna be speculation without research, but if I were to guess, we know that it can be stimulated from a male. Another anaconda in this enclosure called Jazz thought that Ariana was a male, and AKA Ariana was named Aries. Well, we found them locked up one day, and turned out Aries was Ariana. So parthenogenesis can actually be stimulated through breeding of two anacondas. Now that breeding was not successful, ended in nothing. There was no eggs, there was no fertilization whatsoever. Jazz got removed from the enclosure in about a year oh, oh man anacondas they don't want none unless you got <laughs> never mind here we go here we go anyway where was i a year and a half later she had that partho birth that did not go well and about another year later she had this successful one with frida here my speculation is if a male breeding her well it stimulated that that birthing process or, or that goodness this is really really difficult <laughs> say there's not many males in the wild to breed a girl like ariana here and then he dies from happenstance. Well, she has to save her bloodline, right? So she's going to try to clone herself. Oh. <laughs> she's going to try to save herself through that replication of her DNA. So that's probably speculatively why parthenogenesis happens. Probably. That kind of makes sense, right? Somebody help me. It's pretty. There you are. No, it's Nick Helen. Helen Killer. Perfect, I was wondering about Helen. Now, what are the odds that an albino like this is born without eyes? I don't know exact numbers, but it's actually more higher than the others of like two headed snake because albinism, unfortunately, just like a lot of dog breeds, they've been bred together so long that it used to have a lot of like nanotations and bad things that came along with it. Helen was not albino to albino, but she still came out with no eyes. And unfortunately that is just a defect or a little deformity that she has, but because of that, she's so special. So do you think that with a snake like Helen here without eyes. Do you think that hurts her in the wild? Uh, if she was in the wild, I would say probably a little bit, especially yeah. being the al albino. Oh, she yeah. just get eaten immediately. Ball pythons, they don't use their eyesight all that much because they are very nocturnal. So they have the other senses, like the heat pits in the front of her face, that can detect 0.2 degrees difference. So if it has a heat signature, that's food. That's and then they also use that forked tongue just like all other snakes and lizards. Uh, so they have the directional smell. Almost, it kind of prints an image in their head when it touches that Jacobson's organ in the back of their throat. So even with some of these animal anomalies that we have here at the zoo, it seems as if when they survive, it doesn't impair their lifestyle at all. That's interesting. You know what's crazy too, Noah? What's that? So because she doesn't have eyes, a lot of people find it less scary. Helen is actually one of the snakes that we use here, and I bet she's been at least 500,000 people's first snakes they've ever held. That's a lot of first people. So it's pretty cool. We found a lot out about parthenogenesis today, and I hope that you learned a lot as well. I'm sure we're going to have some more partho babies in the future. Ariana keeps popping them out over there. Speaking about. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.